Hi, my name is Michael, and today you're gonna learn how to edit in Adobe Premiere Pro in just under 15 minutes. Let's not waste any more time and just jump straight in. Okay, so when we open up Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna wanna hit new project. This is essentially how you start, you know, editing. First things first, you wanna change the location to where you're saving your project. This is very important. Make sure you're saving it somewhere where you know. So I always save mine in, a, in the Adobe folder for Premiere Pro. Then you want to name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name this tutorial. Here's a quick tip. If you want your editing process to be more smooth without a lot of lag, if you have the option, make sure you select Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration CUDA. This will basically use your GPU when you're editing and uh, there won't be as much lag when you're playing back stuff. So highly recommend that you select that and then the rest you can leave the same and just hit OK. OK, so my layout is probably a little different from yours because Mine is customized and I highly recommend that you do that. But uh, let me just go to workspaces and editing. This is probably what you will be presented with, something similar. And basically you can move all of these panels around as you can see. So this is, as you can see, it's really customizable and I recommend that you do it once you get more comfortable with the editing software. If you go to edit and keyboard shortcuts. I highly recommend that you take a screenshot of this and print it out and put it beside yourself when you're learning to edit because this will be a lifesaver and it will speed up your editing workflow. Make sure you memorize all of these shortcuts and uh, in a matter of a week, you will be blazing through uh, your edits. And also these are all customizable as well. So when you get comfortable, play around with it, see what works best for you. Okay, so here is the timeline. This is where all the editing takes place. But first, if we go to a uh, project over here, we can import some clips and there's a few ways to do that. You can go to file um, and then you can go to import or you can right click and go to import or the way I like to do it is you go to a folder that you have, you select some clips that you want to import and then you drag them in like this. You can have it listed like this, which is how I prefer it, or you can have an icon view and then you can see and you can like sort of watch through what happens in your video. Um, you can also make them bigger, smaller, uh, same with this. I like doing it like this because I feel like I can see a lot more. You can also sort your videos by name, by frame rate. So to begin editing, what you will do is go to timeline and using the shortcuts that you learned, you can do control N to make a new sequence. You might be a little overwhelmed with all the options here, but honestly, if you're making just a YouTube video and you don't need anything specific, then just go to RE and then go to 1080p. And then uh, depending on the frame rate, which you shot in, choose the one you want. You can go to settings and this is your standard 19 by 20 or 16 by nine sequence. So I recommend if you're just starting out, just leave this all the same and you can name it. I usually name mine like main. Organization is one of the most important things when editing and Premiere Pro is very simple when it comes to organization. If you right click and create a new bin, this is essentially like a folder in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna name this um, drone. And that's where I would put all my drone footage. So I can just drag that into there. And you know, I can always hide this if I want. Then I can make a new bin and I can call this sequences. And I can drag my sequence in. You guys get the gist. It's quite simple and very effective at organization. All right, let's drag some clips into the timeline. This is all, this is also pretty simple. And there's a few ways to do it. So let's say I want to drag this clip in right here. I can just drag it in like this. I can also drag it in from here, but let's say I want to drag in a specific uh, moment in time of this clip. You can watch it through here. You can sort of preview it. So let's say I want to start it here and end it here. You will use I and O to make in and out points. So I'm going to watch it, hit I, watch it, hit O, and then you can import it with video and audio. Or over here you have two options you can import just the video part of it like so or you can just import the audio for this instance i'm gonna just import the video this will usually pop up if you're working with 4k footage in a 1080p timeline for this example i'm just gonna hit keep existing settings to move around in the timeline if you hold alt and scroll your wheel you can zoom in as you can see if you hover above here and you can zoom in on your 
clips like this, you probably want to know how to cut a video clip. So you can either drag it like this, and this will cut your clips like that. Control Z to undo things. And the way I like doing it is if you hit C, it will bring up this razor tool and you can cut up your clip in all these different ways like that. But there's also another way. If you're watching a lot of footage, so let me dra drag in this drone clip I have. Uh, you can just watch through things and if you hit Q at one point Look at that it cuts and then deletes automatically the part that you don't want if you hit W It'll do it for the other side of your tracker when let's say you make a cut like this and you want to delete this You can just press delete instead of dragging like this. What I like to do is hit this uh, Snap in timeline make sure that is selected and then if you use your up arrow key and your down arrow key you can move from beginning to the end of each clip. You also have to make sure that this is selected. So let's say if I move this clip up here to track number two and I try and do that, it won't work. You have to have this selected and that's when you can jump around really fast in your timeline. Let's say you shot something in 60 frames per second and you want to slow it down. Well, if you hit S, this will bring up clip speed slash duration. And let's say you shot this, I shot this in, um, 120 frames per second i will slow it down to 20 percent for the smoothest playback and then as you can see it is now slow motion okay now let's say that you want to import a clip with some audio for me that's just some annoying wind noise right and this wind noise for me is a little too loud well to turn down the volume there's a couple ways to do that you can either expand this audio part and hit this uh pen tool or just press p and then you can make you know these points and then just bring it down in decibels so this is like negative 10 decibels you know you can play around with this but for me the simplest way to do this is hit g this will bring up audio gain and then here you can do like negative 10 decibels and that'll bring down the whole tracks loudness let's take a look at some of these other tabs that you have at your disposal you go to effects and controls and click on a clip this is where you will control the effects that you apply on your clips. You can also zoom in by using the scale um, and you can just sort of just click and drag. You can change the position of your clip, the rotation, um, the opacity. And then if you go to effects over here and type in like, um, let's say you want to blur your clip. So I'll go to camera blur and apply it. Then if you go to effect screen controls, this is where you would control that effect. Media browser is not something I really use. So what I would do is just close panel, libraries, I don't use either, info, close panel, markers, close panel, history, close panel. That's just cluttering your workspace. Lumetri color is where you will um, color correct and grade your footage so you can adjust the contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation, all that fun stuff that that happens in Lumetri color and you have all these different tools such as curves and um, color wheels if you go to essential graphics this is sort of uh, making more customizable graphics if you download templates this is where they will you know appear and this is where you edit them and then audio clip mixer this is where you work with audio but if you go to window you will have all these other um, things that you can have open so what I like having open is Lumetri scopes and then this gives me this waveform which I use when I color grade my clips okay you want to add some text to your video well you can either hit T or click this type tool and start typing away then you want to go back you can move this around scale it up and down and then the best place to probably go is essential graphics and here you can change your font you can uh, adjust the scale as well um, you know all that fun stuff let's say you want to animate something let's say you want to animate a little zoom in on this clip well you go to scale in FX and controls and you hit this time watch this will make a keyframe then you will scroll to wherever you want the animation to end so let's say i'll go to the very end and basically here you change the values so i'll change this to 120 and this makes a keyframe and if i go back and play it through there is a slight zoom in on my footage and this is how it works for if you want to animate rotation or position hit that 
stopwatch and start making keyframes. Let's go back to the timeline for a second. You know, if you're dragging your clips around, you're gonna get gaps and a way to get rid of gaps really fast instead of dragging things to their place, you can always hit this empty space, like right click and then click REPL delete and that'll just delete that. I just wanna go over some of the things over here under your main program monitor. Let's say you go to this clip and you apply, you know, some some contrast, some shadows, and you want to see what it would look without that. Hit this plus button and hit this effects and then pr press OK. Then it'll show up over here and you can click and as you can see it removes any sort of effect that you put on it that is really a handy tool that you want to add also what i like doing is if you go to the beginning of this clip hit i it will make an endpoint, and then go somewhere like where the clip ends hit o it'll make an out point then if you go plus and then add the loop playback and you press this this will actually loop your clip in infinity and this is really useful if you're adjusting some things adding some effects and you want to loop your clip another thing i wanted to go over is if you hit right click and new item and adjustment layer and just hit ok um this is basically like a layer which you can put over your video clip where you can add effects onto so if you don't want to add anything to your original clip you add an adjustment layer and then you can add all sorts of crazy things on this layer and then you can hit this eye which will basically toggle it on and off. If you want to lock a specific layer to make sure that you don't make any more changes to it, you hit this lock. And as you can see, it makes these like diagonal lines. And uh, now I can't do anything. I can't delete it. I can't select it. So you just got to click that again to, un to undo that. I had this problem when I was starting out where I would accidentally close things like, um, let's say I'll hit this X, right? And I'm like, oh, did I just delete my whole timeline? No, you didn't. If you go to sequences and hit main, it will pop back up. One thing I'd also want to mention, if you don't have the best computer, you want to go over here and change this from full to one half or one fourth this basically reduces the resolution of your video when you're playing it back but in turn it makes it smoother so if you've added some sort of intense effect and your computer can't handle you can always go down here and change it to one fourth one half and the playback should be way smoother okay you've got your little video finished and you want to export it to share it to the world very simple stuff you're gonna go all the way to the end of your video and hit O. This will make an out point. And it'll make sure that everything with that is in between these two points will be exported. The reason why you would want to do this is let's say you have dragged some sort of clip that you don't want to include. Um, by the way, a way to duplicate clips is you hold Alt and then you just drag it out and you can literally duplicate your clips very simply like that. So let's say you don't want that to be in your export. That is why you have to create this out point because if you hadn't, it will export with this and all this black space in the middle. Then you will use Control M. This will bring up the export settings. I recommend that you choose uh, H.264. Out of all these amazing options, choose H.264 as that is the best. Make sure you choose match source, match source high bit rate. Output name. This is where you will choose the name. This is where you choose the name of the file which you will be, which you will be exporting. So I can just once again rename this to something like tutorial. Make sure that your width and height are what you set at the beginning. So mine was 16 by 9. Make sure your frame rate is correct. Uh, if you want to really export at the highest settings, make sure you have render at maximum depth selected. All of this stuff can just remain the same. Bitrate settings really depends. If you're posting to something like YouTube, it will have different bitrate settings than if you were to post it to TikTok. So really research this. Okay, and then make sure that these are all unchecked. You wanna make sure you use maximum render quality is checked. Make sure you use previews is off and all of these others should be off. This gives you an estimated file size. So if you see this to be like two gigabytes, you might wanna be concerned and something should be off in your settings as file sizes usually shouldn't be bigger than one gigabyte, <laughs> depending on what you're editing, of course. And then from here, all you gotta do is hit export. And there you go, you've exported your first video from Premiere Pro. If you have any more questions, 
uh, about anything in Adobe Premiere Pro, let me know. In the comments below, I'll try my best to respond to all of them in the best way that I possibly can. Okay, and as my last note, I just wanted to say, remember, practice makes perfect. The more that you edit and practice in Adobe Premiere Pro, the better you're gonna get. And I think I got the handle of the software in just about a month. So honestly, if you put in the effort and just sit down for like an hour or two every day and just practice, you're gonna be editing like a pro in no time. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps me out. And consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos on my YouTube channel. That would be greatly appreciated. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next one.